Welcome back to the second part of the Zemish Gambit in the King's Indian Defense and today we continue working on the classical ideas and this Indrostein Bronstein Queen sacrifice after d4 Knight f6 c4 g6 Knight c3 Bishop g7 e4 d6 f3 we get the classical variation of the King's Indian defense Zemish variation and now after short castling Bishop e3 one of the main lines for black here to counterattack white center immediately by playing e7 e5 and when white is playing the most aggressive and the strongest according to the theory move d4 d5 Black starts immediate counterattack on the king side by playing knight h5, queen d2, and here not the f5 move, which happened in many games played with this line, but quite interesting idea which came from the former challenger, challenger for the world championship title, David Bronstein, and this move is queen h4 check. So last time we were looking at this position and came to conclusion that moves bishop f2 or queen f2 just doesn't give white any promising position and the only way is to play in such a situation g3. And uh, we tested the interesting queen sacrifice on the Bronson after knight take g3, queen f2 knight takes f1, queen takes h4 and knight takes e3 and already we know that the strongest continuation for white in this position is move king e2 after knight takes e4 so white has two important moves in such a situation one is probably the strongest rook c1 and second option is to play b3 so in such a situation white is having a queen for two bishops and two pounds however I would say black situation is just quite a quite interesting because we have quite a solid pawn structure it's just quite difficult for white just to to thread position on, on the king side so king is just quite good protected the bishops on g, bishop on g7 very soon could become very active and black has just quite solid position and second plan as we know for black is just to open up the situation on the center and the other plan could be f7 f5 to try starting the counter attack against the white's king so what's the problem with this b3 move? So this b3 move happened in the game between Juja Pogal and Zaki Harari in San Francisco Open Tournament in 1986. So after b3 in knight a3, rook c1 and bishop d7, as I explained in the previous lesson, so black is having very big problem with his knight on, on c4 which usually is going to b6 and then hardly even could join the fight so when white is allowed black's knight to go to a3 and from then to b5 so black very soon could exchange this knight and to achieve quite strong position so because uh, white has no I would say a future attack on the king side so usually this knight from c3 could be transposed on e3 and then to g4 to support white's attack on the king side sometimes as in the previous lesson I explained to you when Karpov beat Vilimirovich who is moving this knight from d1 to e3 and then to f5 later on so now because black is intending all the time to play knight b5 